Okay, let's talk about compound inequalities. You can see here I have an example problem. I'm going to walk through how to solve this step by step. But if you're studying compound inequalities, this is a type of inequality. And it's uh, uh, in contrast to another type called a linear inequality. But with any inequality, um, you need to know how to graph the solution set to an inequality. So there's some other things that go along also with compound inequalities, the word and and or uh, come into play. So I'm going to quickly review these concepts as well, because obviously if you're interested in compound inequalities, it's just more than just, hey, how do you solve this problem real quick? OK, because if you're, you're not quite sure and you're just solving this problem, chances are you might have questions about these other things. So as a math teacher, I am going to, uh, you know, really help you out here. Um, so I'm going to kind of try to keep this video pretty short and direct, but we need to cover things um, that you, we have to make sure you understand everything about inequalities. Okay, so I don't want you to walk away from this video without really having a quick review on all this stuff. Okay, but before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. As I said, I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most powerful online video-based math help programs there is. I'm going to leave a link to that program in the description of this video. So whether you're taking a class or you need to take a full math class, my program can help you out. Now, as a math teacher, I just can't help to stress every single time I speak to any math student the importance of note-taking, okay? How are your notes? If they're anything less than exceptional, then you're doing yourself a disservice in mathematics. So over decades of teaching math, there's one rule that I've seen that I firmly believe and I've just seen this over and over through the years, is those students with the greatest math notes typically have the greatest math grades. They're, it's just a correlation that it's just a rule. Okay, I don't know if it's a rule of the universe, <laughs> but it's a pretty solid rule. Okay, So if your math notes are not that uh, organized or sloppy or you, know, you don't take math notes, then you need to improve in this skill. Okay, Don't take any shortcuts. You have to improve your note-taking if it's not absolutely... Uh, you know, excellent. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer math notes. I'm going to leave the link to those uh, very comprehensive detailed math notes. I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video as well. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. All right, so let's get into this problem. And so we're talking about compound inequalities, but let's just uh, quickly distinguish uh, compound inequalities versus another type of inequality. And that would be a linear inequality. So a linear inequality would be something like 2x is less than 8, or maybe x is greater than or equal to negative 9. So there's just one situation here, OK? Uh, x is greater uh, greater than or equal to a particular number, or less than or equal to, to a particular number. It doesn't make a difference. This is an example of a linear inequality. Now, a compound inequality, there is more there's kind of like there's more um, inequality symbols going on. So, for example, negative 4, um, well, x would be greater than negative 4, but at the same time, less than or equal to, let's say, 10. Okay, this is an example of a compound inequality because we're stating two things here, right? So we have, it's almost like you have two linear inequalities going on. You have, hey, x, this number is greater than negative 4, but at the same time, it's got to be less than or equal to uh, 10. So that's the um, idea between compound. Compound kind of implies two things, right? So this is a range of values. So when we talk about compound inequalities, if you just uh, looked at this uh, problem here, if I'm saying in this number, okay, numbers, uh, x, right, represent numbers, I'm saying have to meet two conditions. It has to be greater than negative 4 and, okay, I'm using this word and, at the same time, less than or equal to 10. So this and, all right, implies a graph that looks like this, all right? So if you're not familiar with graphing um, inequalities, then kind of have to go back and review linear inequalities, but we'll, we'll touch on that here, okay? So the graph would be like this. We're going to fill in this circle at 10, okay? So all these numbers not including a negative 4, all this range right here to include 10 would be the solution set. Now, this is an and statement, all right? Uh, x, give me all x's that are greater than negative 4 and at the same time less than or equal to 10. 
okay, and, all right? So that's what we're talking about. But I kind of like to think of uh, when we talk about the graphs, so you don't confuse this, um, I like to think of the word hand, all right? So and, you think of the word hand, all right? Now, why would I say that word? Well, this kind of looks like a handlebar on a bike, okay? So here's maybe a little bike in here. Here's the tire of the bike and the pedals, right? So here, even you're thinking and, you're like, oh, the graph is going to be like a bar, like a handlebar, okay? Now, that would be in contrast to, let me go ahead and erase this guy over here, um, the word or, right? So what would that look like? Well, the graph would look like this. Let's see if we can reconstruct the actual um, compound inequality, but it would be something like this. Let's use the same numbers, 10 and negative 4. Okay, so something like this. So what am I saying here? I'm saying all x's, give me all x's that are less than negative 4 or, okay, or greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so this is another example of a compound uh, inequality. Now, sometimes when you're, you can have an inequality that kind of looks like this, and when you solve it, you can end up with an or statement. All right, so an or statement, the solution set is these numbers over here, okay, all numbers that are less than negative 4 or, okay, uh, numbers that are greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so these are the solution sets, and we represent uh, solution sets by graphs for compound inequalities and linear inequalities as well. So now look at this or graph, okay? It looks like this, okay? Like, kind of like that. Now, I like to think of that as like the oars on a little boat. Like here's a little rowboat, here's a person in the boat, and they got the little oars out like so, okay? So the graphs going this way, okay, are going to be the graphs of an or statement versus our and statement, which is going to be like handlebars. Very, very important uh, that I stress this because just experience, you know, over years and years and years and years and years and thousands and thousands and thousands of papers tells me that students are going to confuse this. So if you're studying compound inequalities, then, you know, you're going to have to, you know, also really be, uh, have a firm grasp on these words and and or and the respective graphs. Okay, let's get into this problem now. And once you understand this, then this is fairly uh, easy stuff. All right, so um, here's our inequality, okay? The one thing I want you to know is that the way we solve a compound inequality is pretty much uh, we're taking the same steps as if we're uh, solving an equation. But effectively, what we're going to do is kind of solve for x in the middle, okay? So if this was an equation, what would I do? I would subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. But here, I need to subtract 2 from all sides of the inequality. So it would look like so, okay? So that's going to be our first step. So when we add down, I'm going to get uh, negative 12, all right? It's less than, I got my 4x in the middle here, uh, less than or equal to positive 16, okay? So uh, pretty straightforward. But again, what I'm trying to do is to get x by itself. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to divide everything by 4, all right? Now, Here's the thing, okay? If that was a negative 4, okay? Remember, uh, when you're dividing it by a negative number, uh, uh, when you're working with inequalities and you divide by a negative number or multiply by a negative number, your inequality signs will reverse. Here, this is a positive number, so nothing's going to reverse. Uh, so let's go ahead and simplify. So negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. And that's going to be less than x. And then here I'm going to have less than or equal to a positive 4. Okay, so what kind of statement is this? This is an and or an or. Okay, and how can we graph this? Well, we're saying, give me all x's that are greater than negative 3 and at the same time less than or equal to positive 4. So I can just go ahead and graph that real quick. The easiest way to do that is just to plot these two numbers. have uh, put two circles like so. Okay, now uh, I know that this is an and station, uh, statement, so it's going to be a handlebar type of graph. So an open circle is only for greater than. Okay, I don't have an equal to, so I'm going to leave that open, and then at positive four, I got to fill that in. So this graph is saying all numbers that are greater than negative three, uh, two, positive four, up up and to uh, include 
positive 4, and this would be the graph. So this is the solution, and this is the graph of that solution. And oftentimes you'll be given a graph, and you'll need to kind of reconstruct that. But the main thing, too, is to really understand the difference between and and or statements when we're talking about compound and the qualities. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Now that you're a complete expert on compound inequalities and inequalities, again, you know, it's not just about, hey, can I solve this problem real quick? Yeah, I could have done that for you real fast, but I'm trying to have you walk away with a real firm grasp of the other associated concepts when it comes to inequalities. All right, so if you enjoy this video in some uh, small way or huge way, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years at the time of this video. I already have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel organized in various playlists that are there to help you out. If you haven't figured out already, I love to teach math and these videos are for you. So if you like my teaching style, and I have a ton of uh, things on my channel that can help you out. But again, if you want my best uh, uh, resources and uh, programs, then you can check out the links in the description of the video uh, down below. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.